But it wasn't until I met Mary that she showed me the way and said, Phil, you would be a great candidate for this. Here's some books that will expose you more to project management, and here's the website. So she gave me pretty much all I needed. And I went on the PMI.org website, started finding out more, and you know, got really excited and tried to get buy-in from management. Hey, I'd like to take this exam. But that, that, that buy-in wasn't forthcoming, and I ended up doing it on my own, on my own nickel, and um, ended up taking the exam. And it, it was a long process for me because I started off in January 2005, got done in June 2005. So it was a very long journey, only because I didn't have the pleasure that many of my students now have to have a dedicated trainer, to have someone who puts them through the process. So after I got done with my PMP exam with a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, very, very hard, not that I failed or anything, it was just very difficult studying, working at the same time, knowing what to read, what not to read, and so on. But after getting through it, and many thanks to Mary who showed me the beginnings of it, um, I decided that this is what I was going to do to help people. Now, I hadn't planned to do this full time, helping people through project management or leadership. That, had, that was coming later on. It had to be much later in my career because at this point, I was just getting immersed into um, structured project management, ordered project management. So getting into the PMI, understanding what it really meant from a PMI, Project Management Institute standpoint, to be a project manager taking it to heart, um, understanding the code of ethics, being someone who just doesn't practice project management but actually believes it. It took a while. And um, in 2005, I had the pleasure of working for Honeywell. 2005, I got, a, I got a int successful interview with them, and eventually that led to a contract you know, employment with them in 2006, 2007, 2008. I was at Honeywell, and um, 2006, 2007, actually 2007, because I ended up working for Motorola towards the end of 2007. So that Honeywell for a while, and that exposed me to more project management um, in a more formal setting. Um, we had very rigorous control. So all along the way, my experience was building up. Um, I was getting more acquainted with structured project management. And um, it got to the point where I started training project managers at Honeywell for the PMP exam. So I had bi-weekly sessions. And I was adding value to them, and that showed me, hey, there's, there's a market out there for this. People need t to know about what this PMP exam is so they don't fail it, so that they do well in it. People need to know more about project management. So around that time, um, I started putting together different materials to help people. And this was more like part-time, so I would put these materials together, and people would give me feedback on how it was helping them. So it took me from being a let's say, research on project management to really practice in structured project management because I'd been managing projects such as um, audio engineering projects, music projects. I just didn't know they were projects. I didn't even know what they were called. But this was like 18, 20 years ago. But now that I look back, I can see that what I was managing, taking lots of clients to studios, producing audio CDs and tapes and so on, it was actually project management. I just didn't know what it was called. And I was doing things like planning, scoping out, and so on. I just didn't know what it was called. So mm -hmm. here I am today. I've gone through several years of managing projects, several years of creating content and material, several years of learning. And my philosophy about the PMI is it is the number one organization in the world. It's the number one not-for-profit organization that puts people in a power position to learn more about project management, not just to take an exam, but to actually know about project management, to actually have resources, tools, techniques to use. It's a great organization, and um, I'm very proud to be associated with a PMI, to be a PMP, to be a PMISP, a PMIRMP. These are all a bunch of acronyms to you, but they actually mean specific things. PMP means project management professional. PMISP means Project Management Institute Scheduling Professional. PMIRMP means Project Management Institute Risk Management Professional. CAPM means Certified Associate in Project Management. And I've got lots of other certifications, just too many to name. But um, it's a kind of a long story, but I hope that answers your question. So, you know, we've, we've talked about the different stages of project management, you know, the different stages. Can anybody remember? You're right, Henry? Oh, I'm sorry, yes. 
Good, good. Be here. I always tell people be in the moment. Be right up front. Okay. So does anyone remember the five stages we talked about? They're actually called process groups. Does everyone remember? Yes. Initiating. Planning. Planning. Executing. Executing. Monitoring. Monitoring and controlling. And closing. Excellent. Well, give yourselves a round of applause. Very good. Great job. You're, you're paying attention. Okay. Now, I want to take you a little bit back down memory lane to what a project is. Not the stages in a project, but what a project really is. Okay? So, when we think about a project being something, we know it's something that we are working on. But let's try and define what a project is and what project management is. So, I'm going to let you creatively use your resources. So your books that you have in front of you, I'm going to let you search for the answer, right, of what is a project. So open your books and begin to search. Because the answers are there. I call that creative use of resource. So you okay, with Betty? <laughs> so what, what is a project? A project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. Very good. Did everyone capture that? It's quite a mouthful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So some of the things we can take away from what Bill just said, a project is temporary. And it's undertaken to create a product. So it's temporary and it's unique. Now, these are really characteristics of a project. So what am I trying to do? I'm trying to extract from what he's saying to tell you what the characteristics are. So a project is temporary. A project is not like an operation that goes on and on and on and on. An example of an operation would be like the guy at a, a soft drink company screwing a cap on that poor bottle all day long. That's all he does. One bottle comes, he screws a cap, and that's, that's his job. That's his life. That's an operation because it's the same thing, the same predictable result, no variation, everything's pretty much the same. But in a project, it's unique. And it doesn't go on and on. It's temporary. It has a start date. And it has an end date. Now, a big difference between project management and account management. Who's the account manager here again? Trina? Good. So in her world, once she gets a client, the company doesn't want to lose that client. We're not, we don't want a temporary client. We, we want a permanent client. We want to milk that client for all it's worth, right? So it's not temporary. Account management is more long-term if everything goes well. But project management is different. It has a start date for the project and an end date. So the way it actually works is we create our project deliverable, hand it over to the customer, and then that's when Trina comes in. So that would be the difference between what Shelley does, which is more like project program management, coming out with that deliverable. And once she's done, she goes away. She's not, she doesn't care about what the customer thinks because she's out of the picture. It's not her business anymore, but it becomes Trina's business. And managing a customer after you've come out with a product, it had better be a great product, better be a great service, better be great software or you're going to run into trouble. So that's the difference between operations and account management and project management. They're all different, right? So a project is temporary, unique. Who can find any more definitions of a project in that book? Characteristics. Well, another one here is non-repetitive. Thank you. Can you say that loud so they all hear? Non-repetitive. Non-repetitive. Thank you so much. So we're not repeating ourselves over and over again. Some people may ask the question, well, I'm actually building a 10-story structure, 12-story structure. This is the third 12-story structure with similar designs for residential apartments I've done. Isn't it like an operation? No, because the location of each of those buildings 
is different to start with. The clients are all different, right? The different factors involved are, are different. So a project is non-repetitive. What else? Which page are you on? Can you help everyone 12, find? Page 12. page 12. So someone else, not Bill, not Bill, not Bill. Someone else. It has a purpose. Done for a purpose. Thank you very much. Done for a purpose. Now, I was training a group of students via the web. And one of my students is in France. And he said, Phil, isn't one of the you know, reasons for authorizing a project having money? Isn't that a reason? Oh, I've got money. I authorize a project. Nope. Not in the world of project management as we know it. In our world, to authorize a project, it should be done for a purpose. Not because you've got money and you, oh, I'm going to go project happy. No, no, no. That's not the idea. What is the final characteristic that you can see? That's a mouthful, whoever's going to say it. <laughs> Progressively elaborated. Progressively. Thank you, Betty. Progressively elaborated. Who can tell us what that means? What do you think that means? Anyone? When you're elaborating something, you're explaining it. But in this case, it gets explained as you go along. Thank you. Absolutely. What's your Henry? So progressively elaborated, the more you progress as you proceed, on the project, you elaborate on it. On it more. Now, just to very quickly show you there's a difference between someone saying, OK, this is a product I want. I know I want a marker. But then progressive elaboration could be, OK, can you give me some more details? Then you begin to understand what the shape is. Low odor marker. Then you begin to understand, OK, it's a blue one. But that is different from someone saying, all right, while you're doing the marker, you might as well throw in a whiteboard and throw in one of these. That's scope creep. We call it scope creep. I'll write it down so that you know the difference. Scope creep, right? And that is a real creep on your projects. You don't want that. There's a difference between elaborating on a finite deliverable that we know we're going to do versus just add in extra. So throw in a whiteboard, throw in a, a dry erase, and all that. You know, all that stuff is scope creep. So there's a difference. Progressive elaboration is part of what a project characteristics are. OK? So now we have explained um, the characteristics of a project. Bill said it's a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. What do we call a product, service, or result? What's the one word that we use to umbrella all of those? What's the one word? Think of a word. Corporation. Say that again. Corporation. Um, that would be something different. What was the question? What, what, what could you term a product, service, or a result as? Purpose. Uh, it's a purpose. What's the, the word that starts with D? I think I've mentioned it. Thank you, Bill. Where do you get that from? <laughs> Page 14. OK. So this is our project, right? We know we've got a project, and our end result is to come out with a deliverable. Thank you. OK. So remember, he said a project is temporary. It's unique. And he said a project is a temporary endeavor undertaken to create a unique product, service, or result. OK. This is our project. We are trying to get to our final deliverable. The same way I illustrated having a dream to get into the dream. OK. Now, how would you define project management? Can anyone creatively use their resources and tell us? Not Bill, because he's good at that. <laughs> Someone else? What is project management? Take a look. Scale, OK, very good. That's one thing. Application of knowledge. Thank you. So I think you've got the answer, Tony. So it's the application of what? Knowledge. knowledge. And then going to what Jim just said, he also talked about scale. Right? Scales. What else? Techniques. Techniques. Thank you very much. Techniques. That's another one. Knowledge, skills, techniques, tools. tools. 
Thank you. So it's the application of knowledge. What page are you on? Because I think you found 15. it, Tony. 15? OK, read, read the definition for us. Re read it really nice and loud. Project management is an application of knowledge, skills, tools, techniques, to project activities. To, to project activities. Say it loud. I, I don't think they can hear you. Where, where did they leave off? Just start over again? Yeah, and say it really loud. <laughs> project management is the application of knowledge, skills, tools, techniques to, pro to, pro to project activities. Okay, hold on right there. To project what? Activities. activities. Now, project activities are also known as tasks. T-A-S-K-S. -S, tasks. All right? So this is your project. You've got tasks or activities, right? So you're applying knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to project activities. So imagine you've got your project. You've got a list of tasks, a list of activities that people are going to work on. But you're going to apply tools to get these done. You're going to apply knowledge to get this done. You're going to apply skills to get this done. You're going to apply techniques to get these tasks done. But what's the end goal? Can you keep reading the definition? To project activities to meet project requirements and deliverables. To meet project, project what? Requirements and deliverables. Thank you, requirements. And? deliverables. That's huge. So we've got our project, but the big thing is coming out with our requirements and deliverables. And this is really what project management is. Now let me, let me take you a step further. When we talk about knowledge, skills, and we talked about this a little bit ago. Can, can you give me some ideas of what kind of knowledge, what kind of skills are we talking about? Henry, do you want to take a stab? <coughs> well, in this case, uh, you need knowledge and skills that are related to the project you're working on. That's very true. So, related to the project. In other words, you need to know about the project. Know and understand the scope of the project. Now, from what we were talking about, how do you get to really know the parameters of your project? I mean, let's say you're the project manager. Let's say Shelley's the project manager. Let's say Jim has a dream of a new IT system he wants built. Mm -hmm. How do you get to know what he wants? How? Research. Research. And your research, I want you to remember what we talked about before. Eventually, when you have done your research, mm -hmm. where are you going to put down all of those things you find out about what he wants. You're going to put them down in a project management plan. <laughs> project management plan. So ultimately, you need to be able to plan and gather requirements and everything. That's going to help you get to the end goal. Very good. Now, when we talked about the different parts of planning, do you remember what we talked about? Different pieces. Yeah, the, the main plan in a project. What are some of the things you need to plan for? I'm going to give you a clue. We talked about schedule, so I'm going to take that off the table. So you need to have knowledge about scheduling and time management. There you go. I knew, I knew if I told you that, you'd get it. Right? Budgeting. Everyone's always worried about that one. Thank you. Procurements. OK. Money. Say that again. Opportunities. So opportunities and threats, opportunities and threats. And really, we're talking about risk management. There you go. It's stuck. I knew I would get you. Maybe I can even get you to take the PMP exam eventually. Who knows? So where does the communication Exactly. So communication is also part of this. Very good. Communication is part of the knowledge. Because when we talk about knowledge, we're talking about things you need to know about and things you need to plan into your project. Pretty much a lot of what you need to plan, you need to have knowledge about it to be able to plan it effectively. OK, so what else did we talk about? Evaluating or quality. OK, very good. Quality. Quality control. Quality, ma basically, quality management involves 
you planning for quality and then when we go into executing and control monitoring and controlling we talk about um, performing quality assurance which is different from actually performing quality control quality assurance is okay we're producing a marker that's our final deliverable um, but we're not done producing it as we are producing it maybe we're in the on the factory floor the project manager should, could come on and actually inspect and make sure as you're carrying out the work, you're doing it well. You know, if it's a toxic, you know, got, got a toxic smell or something, you want to make sure your nose is covered, you want to make sure you're wearing gloves, you want to make sure your head covering is on so that stuff doesn't get into it. The project manager making sure you're doing it the right way is quality assurance. But quality control is different. Quality control is we're done. We're not in manufacturing anymore. We're not in executing anymore. We're done, done, done with the marker. It's done. And quality control is really inspecting the final product. So quality assurance is checking the work as it's going on. And quality control is checking the final product. OK? So what else? What are we missing? All that stuff will be monitoring and controlling, which will be planned. And one of the things we need to plan is scope. Remember, I talked about scope creep. So we're missing our scope management here. We're also missing, OK, we've got procurements. And um, we're also missing another skill, which we know as integration management. Integration. What else? Human resource management. Remember that one? I'm going to put HR up here. So that's pretty much it. When you're talking about project management, it's the application of knowledge. Um, one of the things that Trina asked in the earlier session was um, talking about characters and people. And well, we could have a plan, but what if people don't have the people skills? And what if they're not personable and so on? So we're talking about all sorts of skills here. We're talking about just good management skills. We're talking about great leadership skills, of course. Leadership, we're talking about um, communication skills. There's actually a difference. Have you ever heard the term um, um, inept to communication or you know, just not being able to communicate? Because we could have a plan, but we could have people that are just not good at communicating. We do need skills in these areas, right? We do also need techniques you know, to be able to do things like budget, to be able to decompose work. And um, actually, someone who mentioned monitoring and controlling before we started talking about this. One of, the, one, of the, one of the things you mentioned is relevant. We do need to have techniques to monitor and control right? the work. So project management involves the application of knowledge in all these areas, skills, tools. Some of these tools could be a common one that we've talked about is, um, I should say, scheduling software. Uh, things like um, spreadsheets. I mean, who doesn't use Excel here? I'll be shocked if there's no one. Spreadsheets, uh, if there's anyone. Um, how about um, presentation software like PowerPoint? Right? And all that stuff. So, do you understand what project management is? Who wants to take a stab at explaining what it is? OK. It involves uh, someone who is able to take the resources and the knowledge and skill they've already acquired and the techniques that they have in place for what they want to do, put them all together, and create a definite plan. Woo! Give him a round of applause. Now, do you know what I like about his definition? It's organic. He's imbibed it. He wasn't reading the book. He was just telling you what he learned. And that's really what project management is. That's what it is. Anybody else want to take a stab? <laughs> Betty, you've been, in, you've been increasingly quiet. Do you want to take a stab at defining what? <laughs> no. <laughs> Anybody else want to define what project management is? OK, for the benefit of doubt. Mr. <laughs> Bill. Well, I'd say it's, it, uh, project management is, is taking an idea and knowledge and experience in creating and producing 
uh, deliverables, a product and a service uh, in the marketplace. Absolutely. Thank you. Round of applause for Mr. Bill. Very good. Now, I know he's senior management, and you're probably like, yeah, he, he should know this, he should know this. But no, 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 it doesn't follow. So I, I see that you've really gained from our little um, project management, demystifying project management, I should say. All right? So you've got your knowledge, your skills, your tools, your techniques. You need to come out with a final deliverable. And you're going to encounter many hurdles along the way.